you know, look, I would start with the political uh, environment, what's going on with China, making sure that uh, the government is functioning well uh, and they're being constructive with regards to all their policies. Uh, President Xi gave a remarkable long speech, as we know, three months ago, um, and it was filled with all sorts of really good points. Uh, I think it's important in the next five years that people see that he actually undertakes uh, those points that he sort of laid out. Um, I think secondly, as I talked about in my talk, uh, is that the China economy needs to grow uh, and that growth has to occur from increased consumption. Uh, because absent growth, when you have a billion four people, you, you can have a lot of political unrest. Um, and so the, so the whole system can unravel if you don't have growth. And I think the third piece, which is talked about, uh, uh, but hasn't gotten as much notoriety, is the banking system. Um, you know, China's uh, debt to GDP is 300 uh, percent, so it's an extraordinary large amount of debt. Um, so if you think about it, the country went through like an LBO uh, over the past, you know, 10, 20 years, and a lot of those debts, uh, it's opaque, people don't really know how they're performing, um, and, and if there's one element in their economy that could set them back, it would be, it would be if, if the debt doesn't actually perform. So that's, that, those are, to me, the three big watchouts. Mm -hmm. It's happening, by the way. Um, one of the charts I showed is that they've grown their consumer economy from 28% to 45% in the next couple of years. And keep that in perspective, the United States consumption is close to 75%. So there's still a ways to go. Um, and, and we're seeing it uh, happening before our eyes. And it has to. This is a natural occurrence. We've seen it in Taiwan, in Singapore, in Japan. So th this is none, nothing here uh, hasn't been done before or, or, or is... Or is you know, coincidental. Um, so I would just say the, the, that growth has to occur from internal consumption. There's no other place. Um, as China becomes wealthier, as they get paid more money, they stop developing the terms of trade advantage that caused them to become the leading exporter. There'll be other countries that will then become the manufacturers of the world. Uh, that's inevitable. And so for China to continue to grow, it has to grow through just internal consumption. Uh, together with obviously investments and, and exports, there'll always be some exports. Uh, but you've seen in Europe, Europe is still very much an export-driven economy, but that export is much more technological, you know, uh, and industrial type, uh, type uh, uh, and more complicated businesses, uh, as opposed to fabrics or shoes or things like that, that, that obviously are to the benefit of China. So this is a natural evolution, you know, that, that, that will occur. Uh, and again, the alignment of government, the alignment of capital, the alignment of the banking system, these are all important things to ensure that that happens. Well, you have to read the data, and the, uh, there's still a tremendous demand and appetite for uh, non-Chinese brands. Um, and so we're investing in businesses all the time that are then looking at China as an end market uh, for consumption, which is really the first time in the last couple of years that we've certainly have done that. Uh, and you see that. If you look at the, uh, uh, the Singles Day that occurred in November, and people talk about the 40% growth year over year in, in the actual amount of dollars spent, well, in fact, the number of transactions was much, much lower, which meant that what was really happening underneath the surface was that, was that the people that were participating in Singles Day were buying better, more expensive items. And that was, and I've talked to Alibaba, and I've seen actually the numbers, um, and that was sort of the takeaway. And, and what they're scrambling to do now is to figure out, can Chinese brands fulfill that desire, or will they need to carry more and more non-Chinese you know, brands and products as consumers, you know, again, naturally evolve themselves to uh, wanting to buy either for themselves or for a gift, as in the case of 1111, to you know, better, you know, uh, higher price products. And so I think there's, there's a kernel of an idea there that's worth uh, people pursuing. Certainly we're doing it.